showtime! The Capital G Show starts right now. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. We're talking the secrets of eternity. This set has been leaked. Um, I have no idea how, but they are in the hands of Spanish or Latin players. You can see that the um, the text is in Spanish, but there are tons of bilingual Yu-Gi-Oh players, and I am shocked. I mean, this this set is not supposed to be officially released for like over two weeks. It's uh, January sixteenth, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, this is crazy, and it's they're out, so. You know, we're going to talk about them, go over them, and uh, get you guys' opinions, too. Uh, so here's the first card. It is the Ritual Spell, Good and Evil, The Burning Abyss. It's a, it, it appears to me that it is a super rare, which would make sense because Fire Lake was a super rare. And um, was Traveler a super rare? I, I, I'm not 100% sure. Not a, not a ton of people play Traveler, so I, don't, I haven't seen the card a lot in real life. Or maybe not even at all. But anyways... So, Good and Evil, The Burning Abyss. We knew that this one was coming. In fact, we knew the name. There had to be some way to summon a ritual monster. You know what I mean? Um, this card is used to ritual summon Malakoda, now the Lord of the BA. You must also tribute monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal six or more. So, you can't use Dante because he has no level. He has rank. During your main phase, here's the interesting part. Except the turn that this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then send one BA monster from your hand, add one BA monster from your deck, and you can only use that effect once per turn. All right, so for a ritual spell, um, I would have to qualify this as amazing. I consider pretty much any ritual spell, it becomes amazing when it does other utility things that your deck may use. like. You know, all of the Exo Mirrors and shit that the uh, Gish, or not the Gishki, that the uh, Necloths use, those are amazing because they can fucking add themselves back to their hand. Even Gishki Aqua Mirror is amazing because it does pretty much the same thing. You know, a card like Advanced Ritual Art is also in that, I mean, it's kind of in that same pool amazing because you don't have to tribute cards from your hand or field. You can tribute from your fucking deck. Uh, this card gives you a lot of utility if you're going to play the um the ritual version of ba which again it can be a deck now because all you have to do is the turn after you summon malakota or the turn after this goes to the graveyard is you can now send a skarm a graft or a surge to the graveyard and then you can search whatever you need i would assume you're probably going to get rubik because you know rubik can kind of be the one that's a little difficult to get to you know, um, Rubik, if you can't really use it off a of tour guide effectively, and a lot of times you have to go like graph to get it on field. So this can search from Rubik. And again, those guys are going to pay for themselves anyway. So it kind of becomes like a pseudo plus one after you've um, ritual summoned or whatnot. So I think the card is fantastic. And it definitely opens up a lot more possibilities for the ritual deck. The fact that the ritual card has like multiple uses. Um, Next up, we have uh, Farfa, Mal Branch of the Burning Abyss. This card, by the way, I, I think it's fantastic. Um, it has the, again, the same built-in, you know, same built-in statistics as all the other BAs, level three, Dark Fiend, all that, yada, yada. 1,000 attack, 1,900 defense, has the same effects. If, if you control a non-BA, it blows itself up, and you can only use the effects once per turn and only once that turn. Uh, if you control no spell or traps, you can special it from your hand. Here's the interesting part. It's actual effect. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one monster on the field, banish it until the end phase. I absolutely love this effect. My main reason is, number one, is really good in a mirror match, getting rid of an opponent's Dante so you can actually push for damage because in a mirror match, just everything fucking floats. It's really hard to get damage in, in the Burning Abyss mirror match. And this guy just says, all right, your Dante is just leaving the field and he's going away. Same thing with your Virgil. Um, this card makes it really easy to get past, you know, like a Construct or a BLS or something like that that the deck may struggle against, like really big monsters, you know, that that uh, Dante, like, can't run over and shit like that. I also like the fact that um, against, like, Shadows, you can banish face-down monsters, too. You know, it, it just says a monster on the field, um, so you don't have to worry about just being able to go after attack position monsters. To me, it just is a card where... It just kind of, it kind of waves the green flag of, you know, fuck your opponent up this turn because you basically get rid of whatever problem monster they have in the field. And again, you know, if you're playing against a problem monster like Construct or BLS, you just get rid of that shit and then just go in for damage. Next card is um, Kagna, 
Mile Branch to the Burning Abyss, 1,500 attack, 300 defense. The attack is, I guess, respectable. Um, you know, Sir is 1,600. He's the tops at that. But uh, 1,500 is it's decent for BA. It would be garbage in most other decks. I guess it's decent for BA. The effect is if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send one BA spell or trap from your deck to your uh from your deck to the graveyard. Okay, um, this is a card that has potential, just not really right now. I think I don't, I don't really think that Burning Abyss have a problem getting to like Fire Lake. It's it, it's nice that you basically have a foolish burial for Fire Lake now. I mean that's really cool. Uh, more importantly, I would even think right now this card is more utility sending uh, good and evil to the graveyard because if you send good and evil to the graveyard, then your next turn you could use good and evil's effect. You know what I mean? So. This guy, even though he isn't a plus one, you could kind of use that good and evil effect that is a plus one as long as you use it with Skarm, Graph, or Sir. So, you know, this card has utility. I think it'll be better if um, when Fire Lake ends up getting limited slash banned, you know, because if Fire Lake gets limited, you know, those Dante Mills, you may never see your Fire Lakes in games and this guy can just kind of come out. I, I think that he'll be a one of in future formats. Oh, by the way, this card... <laughs> This card is a definite one of, in my opinion. Uh, Farfa is just, Farfa is, is fucking good. Like, I like that card. And the defense is, is really nice, too. This card has potential. Uh, the next one, I don't I don't like this card that much. Uh, Liebig. I mean, the art is okay, but just in general, the effect, well, 1,300 attack, 700 defense. So, the defense is not anything special. Neither is the attack. It's kind of in some weird middle ground where... It's not solid from either front. Like at least with Sir and Rubik, you like you see people set those cards and they actually live. You know what I mean? But or Sir can actually put in some damage, especially with a tour guide, you 2600 damage. With this card, the effect is simple. Uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one dark level three fiend type monster from your hand, but the effects are negated. So, you know, um, I, I don't know. I, I I really can't see this card ever being effective. Like. You detach with a Dante and you special summon like another monster, but usually you could just special summon the monster from your hand anyway with its own effect. Like I just, the only way I could see it being decent is like if you use this, like it dies on the field and then you special summon like a graft and then the graft absorbs an attack and then the graft gets like a sir and a sir absorbs an attack and then the sir gets like a Dante and then the Dante absorbs an attack and the Dante gives you a monster back. Like, you know, basically that's a way of blocking a ton of attacks. But outside of that, I just, I see Liebig as a horrible card. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to be, you know, like Debbie Downer or anything like that, but this card just seems awful and I, I don't see it ever seeing play. The other two cards, um, you know, Cagna has potential, and I think that Farfa is just fucking amazing. <laughs> like, it's it just nice, you know? Like, your opponent has Ophion on board, you just detach, and goodbye, Ophion. Now I can just beat you. I can beat you the fuck down. Goodbye, Construct. You know, goodbye, face down, Falco. Now I don't have to worry about flipping you. I can just get around you without having to totally rely on Virgil, you know what I mean? So, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching, as always.